found it today for a project I am so excited about and it is the making of a French 17th century dress. I wanted to do this project for a very long time and when I found this fabric, I knew it was happening. I found this two-person bedsheet at a charity shop and I found it with overstuff and there they gave you a estimated price for your entire card. So, card? So I don't know exactly how much this was, but considering the fact that I paid 5 euro for everything, I'm going to say that this was not more than 1 euro. I also got over a little stuff that could be useful for this project. I don't want to clickbait you, it was 1 euro probably, but we are going to use the other thing I got that day at the charity shop. So not more than 5 euro for that project. That is for sure. But it remained a 1 euro making. At least the main fabric was no more than 1 euro. And I will probably use over lace and thing that I already have in my fabric stash. So this project really show how beneficial thrifting can be considering everything you could do with that bed sheet I got. Uh, I will probably use the entire bed sheet for this dress because it's going to be a very fabric demanding dress. But uh, you could do many things with damaged fabric and trust me, our planet really needs a break from textile industries pollution so it is very important to go thrifting and considering how much different styles or different things you could do with this uh, you're going to see after when I laid it on the floor this much fabric, uh, I really highly recommend you to thrift Let's now get back to the subject of the dress. I chose 17th century because uh, I chose the entire 17th century to have quite a uh, liberty in the making because we are going, we are not going to do a exact reconstruction of an historical dress. We are doing more of an inspired dress. That's why I take the entire uh, century. And I don't like the shape of the panier of the robe à la française. Why do I put an accent in French words? Ah, uh, robe à la française. I don't really like the panier shape. Um, that's why I chose this kind of style because I still wanted to remain in the Versailles. No, I still wanted to remain in the Versailles theme and when I saw uh, the TV show Versailles for the fourth time already and I knew that this dress was happening like I saw the fabric I saw the TV show I was like I want a Versailles dress but I don't want a Marie Antoinette dress so we are going for the beginning of Versailles the 17 century and I don't have the date of the construction of Versailles but we are going to get inspired by the character Marie-Louise that is the daughter of Philippe Duc d'Orléans in the TV show fun fact, in the TV show he acts like he doesn't really know her but I just saw on um, Wikipedia Sorry. Wikipedia? <laughs> using Wikipedia as your source of information? That Philippe Duc d'Orléans was actually very close and uh, she was his favorite daughter which somehow makes me very happy because I love her character in the TV show she's just so pretty, so gorgeous, her dress is... I saw the dress and I was like, mm-hmm, I want that one and I will put a picture on the screen if I can find some I also have the DVDs so I will watch the show uh, the moment she wear the dress on the show while making it so we are going for that kind of dress it's 1760s in term of dates. No, wait. Oh no, she was born in 1662. I don't know her age, but we are going to pretend she's like 16 or something like that in the show. So that means that make the dress we are going to reconstruct 16 70, 80s, beginning of the 80s. Are Versailles costumes historically accurate? No, because you can't achieve an actual historically accurate costume in real life in nowadays. 
but it's not that bad considering the history record sources we have which I will also put on the screen Versailles is doing a good job Versailles is doing a good job at uh, looking historically accurate I'm also not buying any pollen so I'm going to take the different pollen that I have and I'm going to try to Frankenstein my own pollen for this because I just don't want to buy um, anything more for that project. I also know I won't have enough fabric with that bed sheet. It's a big bed sheet but a, seven, a 17th century dress requires a ton lot of fabric which we won't probably have but we will probably do a more simple version of the dress. It's also mostly shape inspired dress because this flowery fabric isn't very, doesn't scream royalty, it screams more of a cottage core peasant situation. It's not, I'm not trying to fit in Versailles, I'm trying to get the inspiration. I'm like a peasant trying to copy the rich. Oh my gosh, that could be the description of my entire self. <laughs> so, we start now. Forgive my sock, these are cute socks and these are ski socks because I'm cold. But um, this is the huge thing that we have and I'm going to start by doing the petticoat. Now I have the exact same amount with this color and I don't really want to go for the blue side. I want the blue side to be the um, lining but I have a feeling that this is not enough for a petticoat, an overdress, I mean an overskirt, and the uh, top of the dress. I'm just going to do the petticoat because the thing is, uh, I don't know if you can see me talking, I'm going to do this. The thing is, I want the petticoat um, to be a separate piece, like every petticoat ever. And I want the top and the skirt to be attached, so it's just a dress that you put over the petticoat. And I want to prioritize the fabric I prefer, so this one, for the petticoat, because the petticoat can be used when I do a simple cottage core, when I do another century dress that requires a petticoat, like can be used in many different <sighs> I'm out of breath just because I lie down. What? So anyway, I want to prioritize the petticoat with the fabric I like. So this is what I'm going to do now, the petticoat. And I'm going to with the rest do the top and then I will see how I do it. I don't really have a plan, we just go and see what happens. Here I have my two one meters per one meter squares and I have this much fabric left for, I have quite a lot of fabric left for the top. So I'm going to use the computer that do a lot of noises but that show me the dress because I put the DVD on and I'm going to use pictures on my phone to try to make the shape of the top of the skirt so I meant the top of the dress so it is going to follow quite the same shape as these corsets but I need to bring the I need to bring the neckline higher and to change the way it's attached. I need to do actual um, sleeves. So I think we got the shape of the front. Here's the back piece. Now, because um, it won't be laced at the back and it will be attached at the front, I added a little bit here 
so that it will fit. Um, this I need, I will probably after uh, readapt, but I didn't keep the bottom, I went for um, the bottom, I stopped it at the waist at the back because the corset go longer but the actual dress at the back is higher than at the front and I'm just going to cut this and I will find a way to find like to do another piece for the uh, straps and I will also do this pattern because now I need to adapt it to this one all the pieces have been cut out from the lining fabric and I'm going to detach them from the pattern and attach them all together and try it on to see if it actually fits. I might add some dots at the bottom of the back but otherwise uh, I think I can change the pattern pieces according to what I just tried on and actually cut on the fashion fabric which means the white fabric and keep that as lining. Probably put three layers of fabric, but I don't really want to bone it, even if you can actually, it's historically accurate to bone the dress, even if you're going to wear a corset underneath. Um, I just think I'm not going to do it. And I still don't know how I'm going to attach the stomacher with the actual um, top, because pinning the stomacher, I have this fear that the pins are going to fail and stab me. I don't know where this this fear comes from. I know where this fear comes from. The movie Adèle Blancsec. That's where. But um, yes, I'm going to see how I'm going to close it. But for now, I'm just going to cut the actual fashion fabric. This is afternoon number two and yesterday, uh, at the end of the day, I cut all the pieces I needed for the dress. I don't know yet if I'm going to gather the overskirt I did. I didn't have that much fabric to do a big overskirt, so the one I did is going to be quite um, not gathered and quite small, but I'm going to add, I think, this ruffle um, on the sides to make it uh, bigger and also to decorate a bit. I don't know yet if I'm going to take the back of the skirt and gather it in the middle like in the pictures and like, uh, like historically accurate and like in Versailles they do that so I don't know yet if I am going to do it we are Thursday, I want to do the petticoat because on Saturday I want to do, if the weather accepts it, uh, I want to do a photo shoot in the woods with my with this petticoat. So I'm going to start with the petticoat. I think it's a good start. And then I will do the top. Sadly, I was not able to do the back piece in one piece I had to do in two pieces because of the lack of fabric but it will work so let's start with the petticoat it is afternoon number three and I've already cut out a third layer for the top so I have two layers of the lining fabric and one layer of the um, fashion fabric that I'll cut off and I'm just now going to uh, sew the dots and sew them together. I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach the lining and the fashion fabric. I'm just going now to start with the dots. 
there is the petticoat I put on the mannequin. I think it looks very cute, very aesthetically pleasing with the pink curtains. Anyway, this is the uh, lining fabric. I attached the two layers of lining fabric together. I'm going to try to zoom in. And now the plan is these are ready, so two layers of lining fabric to be attached to the fashion fabric. Now, I'm going to uh, first assemble everything and then put the wrong sides together. Sew it, not the bottom part, and I'm going to turn it upside down. If you bone, if you want to put boning in it, which I won't do, but if you want to put boning in it, you must put the boning after you turn that upside down. You do the boning channels uh, on the uh, this fabric, so you don't sew the end, of course. Then you attach it, turn it upside down, and put the boning after. Because one time I put bonings in the lining and then attached the fashion fabric and when I tried to turn it upside down, thank god my boning was quite flexible because otherwise it is impossible. Maybe it sounds logic to you, but in case you were uh, thinking about putting boning, I just don't want you to make the same mistake as I did. So here's the lining and here's the fashion fabric attached all together. So how am I going to attach them? I'm going to take the fashion fabric right side facing up, take the lining fabric right side facing the right side of the fashion fabric, sew along everything but I'm not going to sew along these top of the straps because I will attach them in another way and I'm also not going to attach them for at the bottom because this is where I'm going to flip it upside down. Before we actually join the fashion fabric and the lining fabric together, I remembered I need to put the hooks and eyes for the... Ooh, jeez. Because I want to stay in a thrifting 5 euro project, these are hooks and eyes that I got uh, that I took from secondhand clothes that were given to me a while ago and they are given to me by someone who I just take them because I am going to use the buttons and the hooks and eye and the little things about the clothes because obviously if you know my channel you know that in terms of clothes I am not really following nowadays fashion so what you need to do is you need to take your lining fabric on the right side, so this is the right side, and attach the hook facing the inside. You want to put them facing the inside so when we flip the two fabric attached together upside down, this will be sticking out of the fabric. This explanation is messy, but just do it, trust me, and I will show you. This is um, what we have. Uh, I sewed all the um, eyelids, no not the eyelids, the eye and uh, they are inside. I took off a pin to show you. This is the eye, it's inside. So the top has been turned upside down and I'm going to iron everything to put everything uh, together to make it lay flat but we can see the little eye hooks and eye and there is a drama. This is one of the eye that was supposed to... I say hook and eye and I don't even know if this is the... I guess this is the eye and the other part is a hook. Anyway, this little thing here 
got destroyed under one of my needle that also broke off my machine. It's also quite crazy, it was the only one that broke, but I was more careful for the other one. When the machine passed through it, it just destroyed this one, so this is where it's missing. So I guess I would have to take one and sew it uh, directly on the fabric, but it's going to be... it's not going to be pretty. Um, but I guess I have to do it before I close this. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. Sadly, it will not be as pretty as the others. But for now, I'm just going to iron everything and attach the straps here. And then I will be working on the sleeves and the... Um, Stomacher. This is afternoon number five, I believe, and I cut out the stomacher out of a fabric that I show you at the beginning, and it's basically a fabric like it's a thing I don't know the English word that you put around a baby crib, and I was able to take four pieces for the stomacher because I am not doing a bone. Uh, dress and I don't think I'm going to bone the stomacher either but that's why I wanted four uh, layers of fabric for the stomacher to be quite stronger this is the beast I attached the uh, straps I tried it on with the stomacher and did a lot of cutout for the stomacher um, to fit properly I tried it now and it's not perfect because I don't have the corset so my bottoms are not up so it doesn't give the same effect but I know that this is going to fit. I attached this fabric to the overskirt that we uh, cut before. Uh, I was surprised to find that there is a lot of fabric actually because this is what it looks like before and this is actually a fabric that is pleated so I just took the thread off and was able to get a bigger piece of fabric and I had it here I wish I had a lot of this one so I could do like a big ruffle all there but I can't so I just added this on the right and of course on the other side for now I am just going to do little pleats here for it to fit. The overskirt was not uh, large enough, I didn't add a lot of fabric so it would not have looked great but adding this uh, to the sides it's going to help to get volume on the overskirt and for it to look more beautiful. I actually cut a bit here when I tried it on I realized that it was uh, too low for my hips so I cut it a bit shorter so I kind of adjusted the pattern for me and uh, yeah so this is also going to be a perfect fabric to go with the stomacher it's afternoon number seven I believe uh, or six I think six and I um, this morning folded this and iron it I think I need to cut this point here uh, to make it clean so it is folded and it's ready to be joined with the skirt now I did the pleats beforehand so it will be easier to put inside the top this is what I'm going to do I'm going to sew these two together and then we will be able to attack on the sleeves It is afternoon number seven, eight, six, I think seven. And yesterday I, for some reason, struggled a lot with the sleeve. Like, this is okay. So, so far, the top and the skirt are attached, and one sleeve is done. I had the hardest time doing the sleeves. I ended up using a 
and elastic, which is not very historically accurate, but I didn't know how to do it uh, fast otherwise, and I don't know, it just, it's like my brain forgot everything I knew about sleeves and closing sleeves, and I did terrible. And um, now I have to do the exact same process on the other side, even if it's not the right one, because otherwise it's going to look odd. But I didn't really do the same technique I do usually with my Angelique that I sell on my Hetzi. And I did an opening, like in the 17th century, to uh, make the chemise under visible. And I miscalculated myself. And all the gathering are quite at the back instead of being at the top. And I will have to do the same thing for the other side, otherwise it's going to look hard. But I didn't really realize until it was too late. It's not bad. At this time, actually, this shape of dress is more proper to the one I wanted to do from the TV show Versailles. But uh, the other characters of that show are actually wearing the historical sleeve shape, which is the neckline, like an off-shoulder sleeve and the sleeves are quite placed back so it gives you this kind of this silhouette you know this the I don't know how to show it but when you it gives an optical illusion that you are like this which uh, that's why the gathering at the back doesn't really bother much I guess and so what we need to do now is the second sleeve. What I will show you isn't the best way to do the sleeve, but it's the one I finally succeeded uh, after an entire afternoon yesterday of trying to remember how to do a simple sleeve. I'm also going to use this lace um, because uh, if you saw my um, making a fairy dress video, uh, it's kind of the same way I got the fabric for that uh, video where my mom worked, the lady before her left a lot of fabric supply and she left that much lace and the lace fit, fits quite with the entire color of the skirt and I needed lace because these sleeves were lacking lace at their end. So at first I sewed the end of the sleeve um, so that it will be good and I'm going to add the lace. The second thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this um, lace at the border of this lace and the actual fabric kind of to hide this So once the opening at the middle of the sleeve is done, I'm just going to take an elastic, do a zigzag stitch, place it in the inside, and I'm just going to extend it at its maximum. afternoon it is but yesterday I tried the dress on and realized that there was an issue with 
the bodice uh, basically it's uh, at the top too loose and the bodice like isn't staying quite uh, straight enough so my plan is to redo the bodice by hand like I need to uh, deconstruct it make it uh, less of a triangle shape more of a rectangle sadly for the 1670s uh, a triangle bodice will be better but sadly um, I like I can't remake the actual dress uh, so what's left for me is to redo the bodice and uh, to put boning in it. I know I said I did not want a boned dress but I think it will help by giving the um, dress the shape I want because since it's not boned it does little things like this when I tried the dress on and like the dress isn't very like it sits exactly at my hips so it tends to go up a little so I'm going to redo that. Then I'm going to add, like to actually sew the little ruffle I did yesterday. I did the entire lace I had in a ruffle and I was able to make the entire sides with the ruffle. So I need to sew that. I will end sew it when it comes to ruffle on the bodice because of this little thing that I'm not breaking again. Like the little uh, eye, hooks and eye. And I add just enough to do a little like choker thing and this is what came with the white fabric and because we are using, we are staying in our budget. I don't know how many times I said it but it's something I want to. So I think I'm going to put that and this over because it's actually itchy and I don't want my choker to be itchy even if it will look better see through. This is the last afternoon uh, working on that dress. Uh, don't mind my hair, they are not supposed to match the rest of the outfit. I'm going to change after it because it's been two weeks since I'm wearing this. And um, it's just for the purpose of trying the dress on with the new stomacher that I finished and to see if it actually fits. The choker that I did yesterday, I did a poll on Instagram and asked people to vote if I should put the floral ribbon on the choker or on the top ruffle and they voted the choker. Uh, it was actually quite a tie and like a few, it was up to a few people to uh, change the vote but it was the choker that won. The only thing that remains is to do the gathering at the back of the dress.
forgot to do the conclusion yesterday and believe it or not I'm still dressed like this today so the conclusion of the dress I love it I'm very very proud of it I'm glad I have something 17th century inspired to put over my corsets because when I want something renaissance style I usually just wear my corsets over my clothes which is not a bad thing but I just wanted something to put over that is that looks like a completed outfit the flaws of this dress are this is too big here uh, I should have cut um, more here to have a stomacher more of a triangular shape like I wanted uh, I have too much space here so it's a bit oh too big but I'm glad I did the hooks and knife for the stomacher instead of the pins because now I am not in fear of getting stabbed and it's quite easy to take off I always have to do this because I did a l too long of a top and because of my hips that are quite high I should have cut more here I don't know if you can see but I should have cut more um, make a smaller top so that my hips won't push the top up and I won't have to do this every time it could really work if I just don't do that because Marie-Louise dress has quite of a high color uh, but the thing is because it's too big if I let it be high it does this and I don't really like it so I push it down also because it's too big also here like it's too big here I should have made it smaller I pinned um, the corsets and the chemise with this so that the corset and the chemise doesn't pop out and so that this doesn't fall off my shoulder I know I'm very much afraid to be stabbed but at least I didn't do it here so I reduced the chances of getting stabbed by only pinning at my shoulders pinning for it to fit is not, uh, not historically accurate at all it was something that they were doing at the time it's just a bit like it's bothering me a bit but it's okay I love the sleeves like the big sleeves with the chemise I love the opened sleeve I think I will do it in all of my sleeves now is just so good and this is quite a like a thick chemise but in the future if I do a chemise more thin more flowy less wrinkly it's going to be even more beautiful overall I don't have that much complaint to do I love this dress I'm so happy I did it I'm so happy it turned out the way it is it has flows also this has flows too because I was not able to sew it in the middle <laughs> For summer it's a bit hard because I have my chemise, I have my corset, I have um, a skirt, an overskirt, a top, so it's a bit much but for spring it's just perfect. I love the fabric, I love, I love everything about it and I'm very happy I did it. I hope you learned a few things while watching this video, I hope it inspired you to do a 17th century dress, I hope you liked the reveal, I loved it and yeah, that's pretty much it for this project. I find you next week to see how I did the hair I'm wearing in the reveal. And until then, bye!